we have to log into our account or if you don't have an account you have to make an account and then you go to your bookshelf you create a brand new book so create a new title press the paperback button all right so you got to put in the book title the subtitle the author name the description of what is inside the book what is the book useful for and all of this needs to have time put into it you need to have research understanding the customer understanding your age category uh, your niche what are people looking for when they're looking for your book so really putting thought into this is very important I would say I think so so it's important for the success of your work if you're wanting it to appeal to an audience now you need to put in keywords here and categories now there is an app called publisher rocket and publisher rocket will let you know about things like stats it'll let you know about how many books you need to sell in or in a certain category to be able to get to a bestseller like to get to be able to get on the bestsellers list and if you're able to get on the bestsellers list, that means you would be more likely to be recommended to people down in the recommendations of people who looked at this, looked at this as well, or in the number one category so that it recommends it to people who are looking in that category. So there is a strategy behind actually uploading and self-publishing your own books. And keywords, Publisher Rocket will also help with that. Publisher Rocket is not free. It costed me like $100 to get it, but I felt like it was a very useful tool. You can also find on YouTube people who will let you know how to find those stats on your own. It would just take a lot more time. It's a lot more time consuming and it takes time to learn how to do so. So I wanted to buy it so that I didn't have to figure out how to figure all that stuff out on my own. It's just a very quick way to do so. Maybe I'll make a video about Publisher Rocket soon. So that is aside from where we are right now with the cover. I'm just going to type in a couple of random categories so it will let me go to the next page. No. Okay, so it's just a simple, like, I just typed in whatever. Oh, you have to choose categories. I already choose one. Okay. Chose one would be the correct way to say that. All right, so here it would ask you, do you want a free KDP ISBN or do you want to use your own ISBN? And with this, you want to decide on your own. Definitely do some research, but from my studies and what I've learned, I decided, especially for my actual book, that I wanted my own ISBN because I wanted the book to be able to go onto Ingram Spark, which is another uploading platform that would allow me to do a pre sale on paperbacks. Having your own ISBN would mean that you are your own publisher. So, meaning your imprint. So, for example, mine is Vibrant to Create, which is my publishing company or my business. And so, my imprint would be published by Vibrant to Create. And if you get the free KDP ISBN, which is advantageous if you don't want to upload to more than one platform, if it'll only be on Amazon KDP and you don't ever want to put it anywhere else, and if you want to save money, if you don't have the money to invest in an ISBN because they are pretty costly, almost 300 for 10 of them, or 100 something for one. For these ones, I'm only going to be uploading them to Amazon, I think. But I still used my own ISBN because I want to be my own publisher. And because I have 10 of them because I bought the bulk amount. So for mine, I put use my own ISBN, typed in the ISBN, and then Amazon would generate the barcode for you with your ISBN. This is not the barcode because it is the proof copy and not the actual book. 
but once it gets published you would have the actual barcode on there so let's say for this random one we're going to put assign me a free KDP ISBN so see it says the free ISBN can only be used on KDP for distribution to Amazon and its distribution partners it cannot be used with another publisher or publishing service so you can only put on Amazon if you choose that um, offer okay and then you would choose what paper so remember when we decided on the book out what color paper we wanted I typed in white so you want to keep it the same so black and white interior with white paper the trim size you would change that to whatever we put it as which was five and a half oops five and a half by eight and a half no bleed you can choose the cover finish this is what matte looks like so you can see it has no shininess there's no reflection which I kind of like especially for photography or being able to hold the book up without the light shining against it but see like this is my friend's book um, so you can see you can see the reflection it's very it still looks good it still looks nice and many traditionally published books are this form but I really I really like this feel. I like the way it feels, the way it looks on camera. I think it's really cool. So I chose matte, so we're going to keep this matte. You would upload the manuscript. So you would upload your formatted, completed manuscript, which would be like this whole interior formatted with all of the margins, the spacing that's needed. So you can see there's like a particular amount of space from the edge of the page to the actual material and it's all lined up perfectly then there's space here so it's the same but there also needs to be space in here for the um, for the gutter and so that the spine doesn't take away so that this is not too far in and so people can still see this material so formatting it takes time to learn and to understand so you definitely have to have patience and the drive to learn and to understand because it takes time to, to understand because it took me forever <laughs> uh okay so you would upload the manuscript maybe i'll do a different video about formatting because that's a whole new topic so here you would put in your cover that you just made on canva so you would this is for if you want to create it in amazon kdp but we already created one so we upload a cover we already have upload your file we have it downloaded, we open it, and it will be uploaded onto here. And once you do this, you would have to press the... I'm not going to be able to because I don't have a manuscript to put in there. So after you upload this and your manuscript, you would press the Launch Previewer button. It would take a while to finally like download it so that you could see what it looks like inside. So while it's uploading, let's talk a little bit about like pricing and things. So for mine, I decided to go with the price of $14.99. So basically all of my books are $14.99. And I decided on that price because I didn't want it to be too, too expensive for the reader. And also people will not buy your book if you're selling, you know, let's say you're selling a low content book for $20. And there's another low content book in the same category with a lot of the same, like, with a lot of the same you know like content inside they're gonna go for the cheaper one as opposed to yours because it is cheaper so people want a good deal but they don't want to pay too too much and they want it to look nice inside so putting some thought into that I think is very important and I haven't seen the returns yet because I haven't uploaded it or published it yet so we'll see maybe I'll make a video about that in the future but yeah, it took me a, quite a while. For the inside of it, I formatted this whole thing on PowerPoint. And that took some time to kind of understand and learn as well. But there are many ways that you could format the interior of a low content book. For mine, I chose PowerPoint because I wanted to have these little diagrams. I wanted to have full control over how to move little boxes in different places. And so that gave me a lot of freedom to be able to move things around. So I'm really happy I decided to do that. But it also took like this, this kind of 
maneuvering or trying to work around it or trying to figure out how I could finally get things to like be put in a certain place so like for example this is the first page I made this whole thing on Canva so and this needs this is gonna be shortened down because I don't like how it looks from right here but so I made this whole thing on Canva with the same little like see the back here this little mandala that's what's on here oh wait no no that's not so so on Canva, I typed in mandala, I put it here, I like changed up the coloring, I added the banner and I put the text, and then I put my logo, and I'm going to make that smaller. But when I was in PowerPoint, I was trying to figure out, okay, how do I make this title page on Canva, and then how do I get it in the PowerPoint? So I had to go to Canva and like really figure it out. So I went to Canva, made this, downloaded it as a... How did I do that? Oh, okay, I downloaded it as a JPEG and not a PDF print. So as a JPEG, so it was like a picture. Then you put the picture in PowerPoint and then in Power from, from PowerPoint, you would take that photo and since it's already in there, you would just kind of align it with all the margins and things. So see, little things like that, like really, I would say it's very just discovering along the way how to work the bugs out, how to figure things out as you go along. So it was pretty interesting to like go along this journey of making this. So I used PowerPoint to format the whole interior. From PowerPoint, I downloaded it as a PDF and then uploaded it as a manuscript, put the Canva cover into the KDP. So once this finishes uploading, it would show you like a, it shows you a preview of what the book would look like. And then you can kind of flip through the pages, make sure all the margins are correct, make sure uh, the cover is in the right places, that it's not outside of the bleed lines or the red lines. And it'll also let you know if there are any errors, if there are errors in page numbers or something is not correct. And then you would have to go back and fix all the things, all the errors that need to be fixed. Then you would save that page and continue. Once the launch previewer accepts it, then you can approve. And if it looks perfect and you like the way it looks, you can approve that launch previewer. Then you press save and continue. And once that is finished, you would go over pricing. You would decide how much you want to charge for the book that you made, something that is fair, something that people would be willing to pay for it. Then you would publish your book or you would save the draft. Um, or you could order a proof copy first to come to you so you can see what it looks like and then decide to publish or decide to make edits like I decided I wanted to make to take these parts out because I didn't like the way it looked in person or to change the colors if you don't like the way it looks when it's printed so I would say having a proof copy first is very useful because you can see it in person what it's going to look like when it gets sent to the person first that way you can see if the margins need to be edited, anything like that. So there is a way to uh, request proof copies before you actually publish the book. And then, so you would request a proof copy, see it, decide what you want to change, edit it. You could request a new proof copy. Re proof copies are not free, so you have to pay um, the price for the shipping and also the wholesale price for the book. So it's less than what customers pay, but you still have to pay for it to be shipped to you and things, which is, I think, fair. And so once you edit it again, get I would get it sent back to me to see the edits, make sure it's perfect. And then you could publish the book so that it could be sent to people. And then there's a whole marketing aspect to books as well. But I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit about how to make your cover. That was how I made this cover. Uh, there are many ways that you could make book covers, but that was the easiest way that I found for myself and I hope it was helpful for you guys, helpful for understanding how you could publish your book on Amazon. If you have any questions about this process or any questions about anything at all when it comes to publishing your own books or about spirituality or about something you'd like for me to react to, you can leave that down in the comments below. If you want to learn more about my books or to purchase your own books, you can go to my website at www.vibratetocreate.com or you can find me on Instagram at vibratetocreate and all of the links are in my bio there as well. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you go on the journey of creating your own little babies because I think these are my babies. These are my babies. I created them. I made them. So they are mine and I'm very proud of them. There's nothing like actually holding your books for the first time. All right. So I will see you guys next time and I hope you enjoy your week, your day, whatever time you're tuning in from. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.